In this video, I'm going to be investigating the burr. It ends up on pieces of wood when it kicks out the bandsaw blade at the very end. A customer recently called me and was concerned about the burr. He thought it was excessive. So I decided to look at, it, look at it some more and determine what the parameters are. It might control the thickness of the burr and how we can eliminate it. So I'll be looking at everything from the blade guides, the tension on the bandsaw blade, the blade itself, the type of wood, the distance from the accu wedge to the bandsaw blade, uh, the height of my guides on the bandsaw blade. Look at all these different parameters to see what I can do to hopefully minimize or eliminate the burr on the wedges and other boards when I kick out of the bandsaw blade at the very end. To start this study, I installed a brand new blade on my bandsaw. This is a, a Timberwolf uh, 14 teeth per inch, 3 quarter inch wide blade that I normally use for making my wedges for segment of wood turning. Uh, I cleaned the tires on the bandsaw before I started so the tires are clean because sometimes you get build up in the tires that can uh, cause you know, bumping in the, uh, the bandsaw blade. But then beyond that, I, I set my bandsaw to what I consider to be the worst possible conditions. Number one, I reduced the tension on the bandsaw blade. It's running at half inch tension instead of my normal three quarter inch tension. I have my guides, blade guides set high here. And in fact, the guides are away from the blade. They're like a sixteenth of an inch away from the blade, not even touching the blade, both bottom and top. I moved my accu wedge back. It's like uh, almost three quarters of an inch away from the bandsaw blade. Normally, I keep it like a sixteenth of an inch away. Um, and just look at some of these parameters to see what we can change to improve or hopefully decrease that burr in the future. I'll be starting with testing a number of different woods at these uh, different techniques. The piece of wood I'm here now is a piece of Spanish cedar. I have some cherry, some maple, and some uh, bubinga. So I'll be trying all three of these woods uh, in this test. So let's start with our first one, which is the Spanish cedar. And I'll cut these segments, all 12 segments per ring, and I'll cut the three or four segments uh, just to see what the size of the burr is. All the sections of this video demonstrating the cutting on the bandsaw are shown at normal speed, so you can see exactly how fast I am cutting the segments. I probably saw a few sparks flying off this because my bandsaw blade is touching my back ceramic bearing. Uh, I have found that if that bearing is not against the blade, you get a lot of wobble on your blade. So I do like to keep that back guide against my bandsaw blade. But let's look at some of these burrs. And this isn't too bad. That's pretty much typically what I see. And if I put a vernier on it, see if I can measure it. It's like ten thousandths. That's actually pretty good. I thought it'd be a lot worse than that. Let me check a couple more here just to be certain. It's between between ten and fifteen thousandths per on that. And it's just on that one edge. Okay, let me try uh, uh, some cherry. That burr is about the same, it's between 10 and 15 thousandths inch thick. Um, that's acceptable and that will come off very easily with, with some, some sandpaper. In fact, I can flick it off with my finger. Try a piece of maple next. And that burrs around 15 thousandths. So it seems to be irrelevant from the type of wood so far. I have a piece of bubinga next.
And again, that's right around 15,000, the same as the other boards. None of those are too bad, and I could easily sand it off with some 220 grit sandpaper. So, Let me try one thing more here. Let, let me actually move that back bearing away from the blade. So that blade's not touching any of the bearings. Sides back, it's completely free. That burr's a little bit thicker. It's between uh, 17 and 20,000, so it's a little bit thicker. But that's the worst possible scenario running this bandsaw because I have low blade guards, low blade tension, distance from here far away. Uh, I'm not using my mag jig clamps, so they're loose. Uh, I mean, it's all the possible conditions. Let me go and reset the bandsaw. I'm going to set everything up like I normally run for the same bandsaw blade. Normal blade tension, use my mag jigs, put my table in, readjust my blade guides, and bring my blade guides down. Like the best normal operating condition. And we'll see how it, if it differs from what I ran on these. Okay, I set everything back to normal with my bandsaw. I started by increasing my blade tension up to three quarter inch tension, which is normal. I reset all my blade guides, both back and sides, both top and bottom, and I lowered my blade guides to just above the piece of work that I'll be cutting, which is normal. I moved my AccuWedge in so it's about a sixteenth of an inch away from the bandsaw blade, and I'm using my mag jigs to clamp it to the table. So everything is activated, everything is what I consider to be maximum conditions, so we'll run these through and see how they compare to my previous samples. The burr is exactly the same. I see no difference. Uh, even the smoothness of the cut is about the same. I just checked that so there's no difference. In fact, this is the other one. And this is the, the previous one. And I see no difference between the two. But I do know that by increasing the blade tension and getting these blade guides against the blade, you have less blade drift. So that is the best condition to run the system. But I see no difference between increasing or decreasing the blade tension, using guides, the distance from the table to the bandsaw blade, using the mag jigs or not, that did not affect the burr at all. But this burr comes off quite easily. I just have some uh, some 220 grit sandpaper here and that's enough to take it off. And of course then I usually have some fuzzies at the bottom of the blade where it kicks out again and I usually do that with some sandpaper to get rid of those. The only other thing I can think of is the bandsaw blade itself. If you're going to a coarser blade, you may get a rougher cut, of course, and you may get more um, of the burr with a coarser blade. But none of the parameters I thought would that would affect the, the burr had any effect. The blade tension had no effect. The blade guides had no effect. The height of the blade guides had no effect and the position of the table had no effect. One last thing that could affect it is the speed of the cut. If you go through quickly, you might get a bigger burst. So let me try a couple uh, fast cuts, see if it makes any difference. And 
back in, doing a fast cut, and no difference. They're exactly the same size burrs. I can try just the opposite, going super, super slow, and see if that has any effect. And again, no change. You know, the cut is smoother. The slower you cut, the smoother the cut. We've seen that in the past. But the burr is exactly the same. Okay, I just swapped the blade out. And this is an eight teeth per inch, half inch blade. It's a standard blade I usually use at uh, trade shows. and what I normally use for just doing uh, cutting laminate strips, but uh, for cross cutting I normally use a three quarter inch blade, which has become my standard lately. But I'm going to try this because it's a coarser instead of 14 teeth per inch, we're down, down to an 8 teeth per inch. And instead of a three quarter inch blade, now we have a half inch blade. So we'll see if it makes any difference on me on the burr. Burr is exactly the same, no difference. Uh, the cuts are definitely coarser, which we've seen in the past. And that's uh, you can see that's the you know, you can see the grain on there, but that's the eight teeth per inch, where this is the fourteen teeth per inch. So it's definitely a finer cut. But the burr Burr's about the same. Okay, I'm trying one last blade. This is actually a metal cutting blade I've been using uh, fairly frequently. It's variable, 10 to 14 teeth per inch. It's a little bit thicker blade, designed for metal cutting. But I've used it for making uh, some segments in the past and seen it work pretty good. So. I'll actually compare it to the previous blades uh, that I've been working on. So let's start with the cherry board. Those are exactly the same. Again, I'm getting a variable 10 to 14 uh, thousandths thick burr on that. Yeah, the surface isn't quite as good as the uh, 14 teeth per inch blade, but it's pretty good. One last thing I can try, and that's seeing if I go to a different angle. The angle of the cut makes a difference. Let's go up to 48, 48 segments per cut. Let's see if that makes a difference.
Well, that's the first time I saw a minor change. I'm getting about 10 thousandths inch thick burrs on those. So let's go to the office. Let's go down to uh, maybe 8 and see if it changes any. It's worse. Go down to seven. And that burr is actually like 20 thousandths of an inch thick. So the only variable I've seen is the more segments per wedge, the less the burr. The less segments per wedge, the thicker the burr. But even still, that's like burrs between 20 and 25 thousandths. off that easy. So I got rid of the burr, just that little bit of sanding. So my conclusion is the burr has nothing to do with blade tension, with the blade, the speed of the cut, the guides, the height of the guides. The only thing that made a minor difference was the angle. And the, the more segments per disc, the smaller the burr, the less segments per disc, the larger the burr. Other than that, I saw no change in any of the parameters that we tried.